This NFL Conference Championship Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Sign up using our link and receive a five hundred dollar risk free bet. That's right, five hundred dollars. And if you send in your first bet slip, you'll get a free T shirt. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash w y n n for a five hundred dollar risk free bet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash win. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is the home for avid sports betters, providing insights, analysis, and free betting picks. Better Than Vegas, it's like YouTube for sports betting. Make sure to subscribe to our page so you never miss a pick. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. We're also brought to you by Better Edge. Better Edge is a stock exchange for sports bets, allowing you to buy and sell betting positions like a stock market. The best part is it allows you to bet with no VIG. That's right, no VIG betting that's legal in 40 states. Sign up at betteredge.com, promo code SGP for a free $10 bet. That's B E T T O R edge.com, promo code S G P. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash S G P. That's aceperhead.com slash S G P. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports. Gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Do we have some sort of celebratory music? What would that be? I don't know. Any anything to uh to to celebrate championship week. Maybe the UFC music. I don't I don't bum, have that. Bum, bum. I mean, come on, Sean. <laughs> We're down to two games. We are down to two games, it, the final two. It is a little bit bittersweet as we realize. The NFL is almost coming to an end, but the Super Bowl feels like four games to me, and maybe that's just because of the amount of bets I put in on that one individual game. I mean, the props in the first half, that's one game. Halftime novelty props, that's another game. Second half is another game. And then of course the game itself is a game. So I I like to think we have about six games left, uh, at least as far as uh, action, I'll be getting down on. You might be right. I mean, I, I do like proportionately, like I probably spend as much time on the national anthem breakdown <laughs> as I would for a normal regular season game. Yeah. Tuesday night <laughs> or Thursday night, AFC South uh, matchup, probably same number, same amount of research. <laughs> it, yeah. I can't believe it. conference championship. And uh, we got a sweet format going. We're going to be joined by a guest talking Packers, a guest talking bucks, a guest talking bills and chiefs, basically bringing them on either, either fans, experts, whatever, some SGPN guys. <laughs> They're and all experts, all experts. Yes. Relative in their experts. own right. <laughs> and uh, you know, trying to have them make their case for their team. We'll give out our, our our final picks for the conference championship games at the end with the exact scores. Mm. So stay tuned for that. We're also going to be uh, tweeting out a props sheet. So previously we've we've done these little graphics on Twitter over at Gambling Podcast or in Instagram Sports Gambling Podcast. Little uh, Lock Dog Tees logo with our Lock Dog and Tees from the week. You respond. You hit your Lock Dog Tees. You're uh, you're basically you win a free Lock Dog Tees T-shirt. We're gonna do it this time. Pick. We came up with ten props. You pick your four favorite props. If you hit all four, if you go four for four in there, Kramer and I came up with them. They feel like most of them are sitting in that minus one ten range. Even some of them probably a little oh, easier. You think you got a, a positive EV situation on the prop sheet? Go after it. I dare yeah. you. So you pick your four favorites. Tweet us uh, your your four favorite. The list will go out sometime tomorrow. Or today, depending on when you're listening to the podcast, and uh, if you get all of them right, you can score a lock dog tees t-shirt. Happy you know that that's never gonna get old, Sean. <laughs> un- un- unlike some of our takes, like uh, like I'm sure I had some bad takes about Josh Allen. Yes, and I even remember what episode that was in because Colby brought it up the other day. Five sixty five. <laughs> I think Blake Bortles is better than Dak Prescott. <laughs> Those are a couple of your bad takes, but the only, yeah, you know, it's so much fun. It's so much more fun to relive them when you hear Colby's uh, microphone list. It's giving me an idea. I feel like we need to have some sort of like, let's go in the time machine and review things. But Colby is the yes. narrator kind of like I'm thinking like a planet earth style narration, <laughs> but with Colby on the locker room, mic. freezing cold takes <laughs> with Colby dance. I like it. We're going to get that going. <laughs> Enough messing around. Let's 
<laughs> what? Your lisp impression is so funny. It's like all you're like someone from northern Spain. Gracias. The the king's English. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. The Eagles have large talons. <laughs> We're presented by WinBet. Perfect time to get that risk-free $500 bet. Risk-free bet. You don't hit it. No worries. You get it back in site credit. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash W Y N N. They're active in Jersey. They're active in Colorado. Get it. Colorado DJs, where you at? We need the sport. Jersey. I won't refer to you as the armpit of America because you're you're more like the um, the heart of America's because you're helping to pump this DGN body up. We need you guys. If you're in Jersey or Colorado, or if you're even just visiting there, sign up for a win bet account and send in your first bet slip. You get a free t-shirt. Just email that in podcast at sports and a free $500 risk free bet. Are you kidding me? And if that wasn't enough, if you refer a friend, if you get a uh, fellow DGN out of your state, to sign up in New Jersey or Colorado, then you get a free t-shirt. All the information you need, the sign up links over at sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N. Joining us on the line, DFS expert and huge Packers <laughs> fan, John Jackson. John, I know uh you were a little hesitant last week to toss in some Packers. I, I think <laughs> in in the DFS lineup, didn't want to jinx it. They had a uh, you know a, a huge win at home. How are you feeling about the Packers this week? Well, I was feeling a lot better until uh, Tom Brady, you know, had the little comeback against the against the Saints, and uh, <laughs> now we got uh, to, to bring him into Lambeau for his first ever NFC Championship game. But I'm still feeling good about the Pack. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, as a Packers fan, you wanted to see the Saints. You wanted to see Drew Brees and that complete lack of arm. I mean, he couldn't get it done at home in a dome. Uh, I mean, him doing it outside in Lambeau is just such a reach. And, and to that point, Tom Brady did not look amazing in a dome ag- against his Saints defense. Like they they ended up winning the game, but a lot of it was kind of the defense carrying them. And I think uh, one thing, or at least from what I've what I've seen and, and not enough people are talking about that, that Ooh, I like these that nuggets. The, the Tampa Bay defense is still very susceptible to the pass. You didn't really notice it uh, last week because you know, Drew Brees can't throw the ball down the field. I mean, yeah. our boy Jameis came in, AKA Jameis and Winston hit him on a deep ball with a touchdown pass. Now, yes, yeah, some of that's a trick play, Michael Thomas. Now he needs multiple surgeries. Like their passing game just wasn't right. And now you go up against this Packers team that just smoked the Rams, a Rams defense that was pretty damn good. Now, yeah, certainly Donald was banged up, but I mean, Jalen, who uh, Ramsey didn't have <laughs> much of an impact in that game. And, and I think uh, as crazy as this sounds, I think green Bay left points on the board. Like, uh, you know, Lazard, that ball that dro- that hit off his fingertips. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kramer, but Aaron Rodgers, we were watching him. Not and wrong. We don't say that that often. Where we're just like, holy shit, this I, dude I, is dialed in. We're being uh, like, this is. I would, I would say that uh, copies of ourselves from five, six years ago would be smacking ourselves today with the amount of fan boydom we have for Aaron <laughs> Rodgers at this point in our gambling career. Uh, I mean, I think maybe this is another element of getting old. We just like good quarterback play, Sean. <laughs> and when you watch Aaron Rodgers play quarterback, and I can even hear my dad saying some of this stuff, like, "Oh, look, look, look at the way he, look at the way his cadence. He's drawing him off sides. That's that's crafty. I, I just he does everything well. He's smarter than the other team, and he still has the arm talent. And I think in the cold weather, when you look at these two quarterbacks, who Aaron Rodgers not that much younger than Brady compared to most of the matchups. But when you when you look at it, at some point uh, in the TB12 lifestyle, maybe holding on in the humidity and the warmth. But is it going to hold on in the dry, cold air of Wisconsin? Is he going to have some achy bones? Is the arm talent going to hold up through the whole game? Because we've seen those games where it looks like he had he, like he needs to be on a pitch count. 
and he loses zip in the second half. Well, what? he was he. I feel like there were some balls that he missed again. I I don't think he played an, an amazing game. And I get it. I, he played it in cold weather for a long time. In screen. Now, you don't have to be like, oh, he played in New England. He's good. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like w- once you adapt to humidity, there's like a real biochemistry thing that happens here. <laughs> he's and got so, that. He's got that cold but, Florida blood now. John, John, where are you at? What are you most worried about? The <laughs> The uh, the Packers' ability to shut down Tampa's offense or Green Bay's offensive line being able to handle what is a pretty strong front seven for the Bucks. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's definitely more worried about the Bucks defense. I mean, when you look at the game against the Saints, that that Jared Cook fumble was yeah. such a huge play and such like a momentum changer and it just like I think that that one play had a, such a huge impact on that game because um, the Bucks, you know offense was not looking good before that and frankly they didn't look that great after I mean they got a couple short fields um, they were able to capitalize and get some points but you know it really seems like Arians is trying to pound the run game in the playoffs here and you know, Fournette's had a couple of good games here, but I, I don't think he's going to be get the one that's going to get it done here against the pack in Lambo. And, and and that's the like that's the the elephant in the room is you know kind of the way to attack and beat this Green Bay team is to hit him on the ground. Uh, the Rams weren't able to do it because of the way the game rolled out. Makes you wonder if you're. I mean, if, is Green Bay going to be able to jump out the same way? I think both of us completely surprised this number is where it is. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think, you know, just from watching the way that Green Bay has been handling their business right now, and then sprinkle in a, a little revenge oh, spot. The I, the motivation, you can't you can't underestimate that. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is like a real f- fucking like he's a guy that like probably gets irked on very few things. And uh, one of them was I losing think, to Tom fucking Brady. I think I think you're kind of onto something. I think, but I think Aaron Rodgers is a guy that gets irked off uh, a bunch of little stuff. I think Aaron is a very per- <laughs> he's a very particular man, if I had to guess. And he takes a lot of things personally. He took it personal that he fell in the first round. He he took it personal. I mean, you hear those interviews. He does a lot of people uh, last year, uh, you know, were saying I was done. Well, you know, a down year for me is a career year for some like this guy, (laughs) he feeds off narratives. And when they decided to draft Jordan love in the, Mm. in the first round, I mean, it's, it's easy to criticize the draft pick, but is Aaron Rodgers having an MVP performance? If it wasn't for him being shoved into a locker and then <laughs> jumping out of the locker and, and just destroying the league. I, I think that really he's a guy that feeds off fire. And they asked him about the 38, 10 uh, loss to the bucks in week six and mm. how much it matters coming into this game. Rogers says, I think the week six game matters as much as when the Saints went to their place and beat them thirty-eight to three. So <laughs> both both conference championship games are have <laughs> have, a, <laughs> have revenge as a, as part of it, and uh, I think that could be a, a huge yeah. difference. And quietly, quietly, the Packers defense kind of coming around a little bit. I mean, it's easy to shit on Jared Goff, and I know because I do it all the time. So. They probably didn't get the credit they deserve for slowing down that Rams offense. And McVay schemes up a good game plan, you know, to the point where I could probably get like a 75 QB rating. Uh, in particular, Jair Alexander, the only cornerback since 2006 to allow negative yards in a playoff game, minus three yards against the Rams. If they can, if they can slow down some of that, uh, some of that speed, I, I, I think they're going to be in a really, really good spot. John, what about you? Are you do you met like do you see a game script flow? I'm I'm sure you've already thought of some DFS implications for this game. <laughs> do you see it leaning high scoring, shootout, uh PPR points from from the running backs? Like where do you see game flow coming from this game? Yeah, I mean, so it's funny you talk about the defense because I've I've tricked myself over the years of following these damn Packers that every time I think that their defense is heading in the right direction in the playoffs. They just come out and, and, you know, let in 35 points and are hanging on by the, you know, skin of their teeth into the fourth quarter. So I do think their defense is much improved this year and they've, they've got a couple studs um, on, on the, on the back end there in the secondary with, with King and Alexander. But I just, 
I'm not accustomed to this Packers team dominating on defense. So <laughs> I don't really think I, I, I'm, I'm definitely leaning more towards the sheet out here. One of the, one of the cool stats I was looking up that, I mean, cool if you're a Packers fan is, uh, you know, Packers are number one half scoring this year. Um, and in Lambeau, um, I think Rogers, or this might just be Rogers career. Let me, let me make sure I'm not screwing this up. All right. So when Rogers is up at halftime in Lambeau field, he's 71 and one. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so I think were you oh saying a play that if they jump out to a lead here, I mean, I don't care who you got back there with Tom Brady, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans. Well, that and, is gonna be tough to catch up to. Right? And that yeah. tells me play the double result. What Packers up at half? Packers win the game. Yeah, I mean, you get a cheaper price. Well, but do you even need to get a cheaper price at minus three in a very reasonable line? And we saw. I, I do feel like they had a little bit of a home field there. The Packers, uh, you know, crowd was getting a little noisy. Now they're the early game, so the temperature won't dip as much as if they're a late game, but it's still going to be sub thirty-two, technically freezing. Uh, <laughs> Again, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and. I'm not gonna try and. As guess opposed the to weather. virtually freezing. Well, you know <laughs> what I mean. Like it's it's underneath 32 degrees. Yes. And I'll say this too. I I think there is something to these narratives, and I think beating Drew Brees on the road. The Bucks have already won two road playoff games. Brady got to a conference championship game in the NFC, which Isn't, is more than the Cowboys in the past 16 yes, years. They've been to more. That's a great <laughs> nugget. They've, Tom Brady has been to more NFC conference championships uh, than the Dallas Cowboys. Hilarious stat there. But in a way, I think this is already like beating the saints and getting to the conference championship kind of already their super bowl. Like Tom Brady came into the season with one thing in his mind. I want to prove to people that I was the key to our success and not yeah. Belichick. And I think I think he already by getting to the NFC Championship yeah. game, he's kind of already done that. Yeah. And by the way, 26 years. I apologize. 26 years. Tw- oh, my oh my god. Oh my god. All right. So John, one last uh, stat nugget. Any any sort of angle that has you talking like br- try and sell us on taking the Packers. Pretend we're on the fence of this one, <laughs> but what what's one nugget that's really sticking in your mind or just angle that has you optimistic about the Packers this weekend? Yeah, so I mean, of course, you you know, I, I dug in a little bit before this, and I, I had to I had to look for something, and so the narrative that everybody's talking about is you know Brady and cold weather, he's used to it, he'll be fine, which is true. I mean, looking back through Brady. You know, with the Patriots in sub 32 degree weather, he's 34 and eight straight up, 25 and 17 against the spread. So that's Shit. pretty good. Rogers, of course, is better against the spread, 27 and 14 against the spread when it's uh, when it's under 32. But it's not just Brady, right? There's 52 other guys that are on the Tampa Bay Bucks, and if you look at the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Florida team, since they've entered the league in whatever it was, 1976. They've played 18 games when the weather is, or when the temperature is under 32 degrees. They're one and 17 <laughs> straight up, and five and 12 against the spread. Love it. Yeah, not lock not, it up. Not the uh, cold weather heroes. And, and well, and remember, no one's talking about Leonard Fournette. I, I just brought him up, and um, and like, his his he's background. Straight up scared of playing in the cold. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got a career in Jacksonville, then the Bucks. He grew up in New Orleans, went to LSU. Like this guy, well, he was on record. I think they were going to have to play. I, I don't know what it was, but the Jags were maybe playing somewhere up north, and and he was on record, kind of like Lamar Jackson, talking about the snow as if it was like hot lava. He didn't want to <laughs> go anywhere near it. Yeah, no, he is. Uh, oh yeah, here's a quote from Fournette about the cold. I hate the cold. Period. I sleep in the heat. That's just how I grew up. <laughs> Mentally, I'm just trying to get my mind ready. That's all. <laughs> that sounds like a guy. And this is from years ago when the when the uh, when the Jags had to play in Cleveland. But I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, he's he's not a guy that's going to look forward uh, to this cold weather. I like weather. that stat. One in, one in seventeen. Yeah, they have they have been bad in cold weather and and bad in Lambo as a as a team. Now, granted, a lot of that's pre Brady, or it all is pre Brady, but <laughs> uh, still, that's there's there's a psychology to that, and and certainly the cold weather, uh, warm weather thing, I I think is pretty legit. The Battle of the Bays coming up Sunday, John. Before we let you go, give us a final score prediction for Packers Bucks 
NFC Championship game. I'm going. I'm going with a shootout here, man. I, I think it's going to be. I think Packers are going to score 35. And I think uh, Bucks are still going to. They're losing by a touchdown, 28, 35-28 shootout to get the day started. And, and we got to ask, like, what's the day going to be like? What, like, what's the situation? <laughs> Who are you watching it with? Any pregame snacks? Take take us through the plan. You have a giant cheese head. <laughs> yeah, so so it was a bit of a sore subject because I went all in on the uh, the beer boiled brats last year for the NFC Championship game and proceeded to just watch the Niners sprint <laughs> all over the Packers all day. So I'm kind of I'm, I'm just holding out on the beer boiled brats. I'm gonna I'm gonna shelve those in case we make the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, probably do some pretzels. Probably do. Uh, Probably do some burgers. I don't know. Oh, haven't haven't fully locked in the plans yet. You know, it's still early in the <laughs> week. Like a lot of fluidity. I like yeah. that championship week nerves. He, he's gonna he's gonna have to do a deeper data dive. <laughs> gonna see which you know yeah. what sort of trends apply to uh, food results. You gotta optimize. You gotta make sure you have a proper <laughs> stack. Bring it back with the proper <laughs> condiment. Little uh, I like a I like a correlation between a burger <laughs> and some French fries. High correlation value uh, there. And a root beer. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, All we'll right. definitely be doing a light beer correlation. Yeah, you got you got to <laughs> save room for food. You can't go with the heavy stuff on game day. All right, John, appreciate it, and uh, best of luck to your Packers. Right on, thanks, guys. Better Edge. Oh, that's right, Better Edge, man. It's like a stock exchange for sports bets. You can buy and sell betting positions like a stock market. Best part, no vig. That's right, betting without a vig. Are you kidding me? If you're an avid better like myself. No vig. That adds up, man. <laughs> Best part is you can play for money, real money, cold hard cash in 40 states. And uh, the guys over, uh, Greg, guys over at Better Edge, they're doing a, they've been doing these fun little contests. Uh, they're going to be starting to do weekly ones for college basketball. You just click competitions, you'll see an SGP one. $10. Winner takes all. We just put out our college picks podcast. Not all the games are through, but so far. But yeah, again, uh, ten dollars to enter, and they give you a thousand edge coins. You make your bets uh, like you would if you if it was a thousand real dollars. Whoever has the most edge coins end of the contest, winner take all on the ten bucks. And if you go to betteredge.com, use the promo code SGP, get a free ten dollar bet. B e t t o r edge dot com promo code S G P. Joining us on the line, he is the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network and the Big Fight Weekend. Also on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, he does the radio sideline report for the Tampa Bay Bucks broadcast. TJ Reeves, TJ, you know they say revenge is a a dish best served cold. It's not going to be warm in Lambo <laughs> come Sunday. Are you worried about your Bucks? I mean, well, they, it, they, they took care of business the first time in Tampa, but now heading up to green Bay. Sure. It's great to be with you and look at you dropping metaphors <laughs> and, uh, and cliches. Well, and all you're that. the, you're the, you're the real radio pro. And I, I uh, thought, no. I thought you would appreciate that kind of intro. So <laughs> please. Uh, I love it by the way, uh, for better edge and the college hoops and the $10 contest, I got a word for you, Alabama. Oh my man. goodness. That's that. I know I'm a little older than you guys, but Loyola Marymount running and gunning in the late eighties, the early nineties. This is Loyola Marymount 2.0, what we're watching with Alabama, but you did not bring me on here to talk college basketball, the crimson tide, better edge. As much as we love that in the $10 contest, get into the $10 contest, get into the $10 contest. You did not bring me on here for that. You brought me on here to talk Buccaneers who last I checked are still alive for the NFC championship game with, uh, with Tom Brady. I, I think we've all heard of him. And now 60 minutes away from being in the Super Bowl, and you're right, the revenge angle for the Packers because in October the Bucks were outstanding, guys. Oh yeah, uh, in a 38-10 blowout. Yeah, no, they they dominated them, and I know because I I think I made Green Bay my lock uh, just because Green Bay had been <laughs> having such a such a strong game, and they got out to what like a 10 nothing lead. Yes. Yep. Yeah, uh, Rogers does some weird dance, and then after that, it is a it is a bloodbath uh, on the Tampa Bay side. You know, one guy who wasn't in that game that will be playing in this game had a great game against the Saints, and that is uh, on the defensive side, Devin White, who's 
Really? I mean, just he's one of those guys you watch the game and he just jumps out at you as far as he's all over the field making plays and just brings a real intensity to that Bucks defense. Kind of reminds me of uh back in their previous glory days where you know, you had Warren Sapp and and John Lynch and some of those some of those uh, beasts on the defensive side really carrying the team. Do you uh do you think the defense has to carry them uh, come Sunday, or do you think do you think the offense can figure it out against uh, against the Packers? Well, the first thing is that defensive performance was reminiscent of those Warren Sapp teams. Derek Brooks was the linebacker who's now in the yes. Hall of Fame. Yep. And by the way, Ryan Kramer, Sean Green, Sports Gambling Podcast audience, Devin White had 11 tackles last week in a playoff game uh, to match Derek Brooks for the all-time Buccaneer playoff record. That is tall cotton, as we like to say in the South. That is big time company to be Seriously. in Brooks's company and have two takeaways. He had the fumble recovery, he had the interception. So you're right. He's the former number five overall pick living up to it two years later with the way he played. They've got playmakers on both sides of the ball from a defensive standpoint though, th let's be honest. I, I, I get this. You're playing in the cold. The Packers are going to be raring to go revenge factor. Like you mentioned, you're not going to hold them to like 10 points or 13 points. They're going to get theirs. They're probably going to get 21. They might get 24, 27. If it's more than 24 or 27, you're probably in trouble. If you're the Buccaneers, the mentality has to be like this saints game. Stay within striking distance. Stay within a score, keep the game tied, get into the fourth quarter, get a defensive stop, get a takeaway. They took the ball away three times in the second half last week on New Orleans. I don't know that it'll be three times, but it might be good enough to get like a stop and a takeaway to win this game with Tom Brady. So if you're the defense, you'd love to have the mentality of shut them down. I just don't know if that's realistic. Now you're trying to be more opportunistic in the second half of this game with the game on the line. I, I will say that's one of the parts of the game from last week that seems to have fallen through the cracks a bit in the analysis and that the, the turnovers were a big deal. And and I, you know, when you're looking at this game, like <laughs> Drew Brees, they did not look the same age. No, Brady did not look like the <laughs> older quarterback. Brees looked horrible in the second half. And, and so much of the game just kind of fizzled off because of that. And that's the area where like, I do wonder, like the defense can play great and just not flip it over, turn it over so many times. So, well, and, and to, and to that point, I, I think the game changing play was probably that Jared cook fumble that the bucks forced and then recovered that flipped the field position, got them in a great spot, gave yep. them their yep. offense. The offense wasn't that smooth, especially for a dome and they weren't firing on all cylinders, but they got you know, short fields got good field position and and made the game a lot easier for them. Now, Aaron Rodgers isn't a guy who turns the ball over a bunch. I think it's going to be tough to get those three picks. But I think if you start, uh, you know, strip, you know, trying to strip the ball from some of these other skill players like a Tunyon or a Lazard or an MVS who has drop issues, I think that's where. Wow. If they can get shots, fired. if no, I mean, it's uh, you know, he's well he's dropped a bunch. You didn't have if to they can get one of these skill positions to fumble and turn it over that way, I, yeah. I think that could be the difference. And I think that's Tampa Bay's well, path to success. And Sean, I can't believe I missed the handicap coming into the postseason. Eli is not here to knock Tom Brady out. So <laughs> yeah. here we let, L, LFG. <laughs> he's got a he's got a wide open path. Well, and and switching over to the betting line. A uh, win bet, of course, uh, presenting spots of the podcast network right now. They opened it up at four. Everyone had it at four. I thought, I thought four was a a generous price. I thought, if anything, <laughs> the the number would go up, but it seems to be going towards the Bucks' favor. Now, I know you're a you're a big uh, underdog advocate, but what do you think about the line movement opening up at four and now bet all the way down to minus three for the Packers? Well, I think what it indicates here is that there are people waiting also for the weekend and to see what that number is going to ultimately be at. I, again, to uh, Ryan Kramer's point here, you are talking about Tom Brady. We're talking about yeah. 14th appearance in the championship game. 13 of them, obviously previously AFC championship games. I mean, I don't know if you've heard this stat. I'm, I'm full of stats. I'm full of it, but I'm full of stats. So how about this? The rest of the entire NFC South, Buccaneers, Saints, Falcons, Panthers, in the 51 year history of the NFC Championship game, have not been 14 times combined between the four teams. That's Brady's insane. been 14 times <laughs> as a player. 
So wow. that tells you what kind of experience you're dealing with here. And by the way, he won three of these AFC title games on the road as the road team in New England. I know that's New England. They won two years ago at Kansas City on the road. So if you're thinking just out of hand that he doesn't bring that kind of wealth of experience and they can't win on the road, the numbers don't back you up uh, on that one. And, and look, you got to you got to be leaning Buccaneers right now because they got the cover last week. Uh, they won on the road against Washington. This franchise has never, ever, ever, even in the Super Bowl year 18 years ago, won seven games in a row on the road. Yeah. They've won seven games on the road in a row right now. So they are rolling. And again, I keep preaching this from here to Hialeah to Anchorage, Alaska, <laughs> uh, to San Diego, to Boston, wherever else I've been on sports gambling podcast. <laughs> If the Bucs are within striking distance, they are winning this game in the fourth quarter. Brady oh. ain't losing, boys. No, I, I think you make a great case there of Tom Brady is a closer, and if they can hang around, they they certainly have a great shot of closing it out. One thing that uh, this this nugget's kind of uh, interesting. And uh, well, real quick, because sure. I have numbers to validate TJ's point. Uh, the late close game DVOA mm. for the Bucks is through the roof, second in both offense and defense. Green Bay's defensive late DVOA twentieth. So mm. late yeah, close and, and, game. And, and, I, I think that could be that situation you're talking about. Brady's down three. Well, Are they really going to stop him? And Rodgers, he hasn't been amazing in these conference championship games. Obviously, he's only been to one. Only been to one Super Bowl. Had a number of chances and they've kind of been snake bitten. You know, they had that game where they were up big against the Seahawks. Things kind of fell apart to me though. Again, this 2020 Aaron Rodgers after they drafted Jordan love, I think we're kind of seeing a different Aaron yeah. Rodgers. This is an interesting nugget. Now, of course, if the bucks win, they would be playing a home game essentially at the Super Unreal. Bowl for the first time ever. The only other team to get to the conference championship game and basically be in a position to win one game and then host the Super Bowl was the 2017 Minnesota Vikings who got their ass kicked by my Eagles. So that <laughs> <laughs> that is you have history working against you and the Bucks in that sense. Yeah. TJ, but maybe a guy like Brady who certainly would rather not have to travel and be around all his TB12 and his uh, super healthy smoothies and not have to bring all the smoothies with him. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think uh, he would certainly value a home game, um, you know, more than, more than even the average player. So that's certainly a little bonus motivation there. Give us a, uh, one more like key reason you think the bucks have a shot to pull this out in Lambeau come Sunday. So many weapons. Gronkowski's played in so many huge mm. games, road games, cold games. And again, Brady missed him a couple of times by about a yard on big plays. The third play of the game last week was a 40 yard completion waiting to happen. And the ball was about a yard overthrown for Gronk a, another fourth quarter touchdown when they settled for the field goal to make it 23, 20 again, about a yard overthrown or he makes the play again. Those are ifs and buts, but I'm looking for Gronkowski to be a problem for green Bay. The Buccaneers have weapons. They've run the ball. Well, in both of these playoff games with Leonard Fournette only in the Washington game. And then Fournette and Ronald Jones is the one, two punch in new Orleans. Look for them to run the ball and a couple of more numbers. Again, it's been belabored. The bucks are never uh, seemingly any good in the cold weather. They're 0 and 8 boys all time at Green Bay in a December or January game where it's below freezing. I'll say it again. 0 <laughs> and 8, including a playoff loss in 1997 for what it's worth to Favre and the Packers. However, including that win against Washington where it was below freezing at kickoff, it was like 30 degrees or 31 degrees at kickoff. Tom Brady now 15 and 2. Hello below freezing in a playoff game. So something's got to give either his 15 and two or the O and eight for the Buccaneers uh, at, at Lambeau. One of those things goes away come Sunday night, about nine Eastern time or so uh, or seven or, or so Eastern time, whenever you're getting ready to celebrate. So we'll see. But uh, again, th this area is jacked. 
Uh, I, I was here. I have been here a 37 year resident through all the awful years in Tampa Bay of Buccaneer football, but this area was on fire guys 18 oh, yeah. years ago when that team, sorry, Sean went to somebody's Eagles <laughs> when everybody said too cold win in the cold can't beat Philadelphia and they closed down the vet. Oh, I keep remember telling that. me, keep telling <laughs> Buccaneer fan, keep telling Brady and the Patriot, uh, Brady and the bucks. You can't win in the cold. Keep telling them you can't go on the road. Can't win in the cold. I love it. We're just here talking playoff football, and TJ just hits Sean with a sucker punch. <laughs> Absolutely love that one. Taking and, some and just, just to pile on. R- Rondé Barber says hello. By the way, ninety-two yards the other way, oh. pointing to the name on the back of the jersey and waving goodbye to the Eagle fans oh, that leaving was the, the worst. one last. Painful. Yeah. The worst Painful thing memories. about Rondé Barber. And and his brother, they grew up in Roanoke, Virginia, right down the street <laughs> yep. from Virginia Tech, and they went yep. to the University of I Virginia. Know. Wrong school. All right, just to pile on uh, TJ's point, I really do think uh, Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette could be the difference in this game. One way to absolutely murder the Packers is through the screen game. They're yeah, all, they're like they're, they're when you watch them defend screen passes, you wonder how they could possibly be this bad at it, but they are. And I think we've seen, you know, Brady, we've seen Brady uh, deploy that with James white repeatedly in his career up in new England. So I think that, I mean, I, to me, that's the, that's the matchup right there. Can, can they, Interesting. Can, can they get the running backs going both on the ground and the air? Because I, you know, if, if green Bay doesn't get green Bay is going to be coming out and trying to get that lead. And so they're going to, there's probably going to be a little Tampa comeback and they can't, they can't just be slinging the ball vertically. I think, I think Tampa's going to have to like play through the running backs a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think their path to success is one, getting that, getting that fumble from one of the skill players on the Packers Two, Very taking, specific. taking advantage <laughs> of no Bakhtiari on the green Bay offensive yeah. line. They held up last week against the Rams. You know, obviously the Bucks so it, have a really good front seven. If they can, if they can get the Rogers, that would be huge. And then, like you said, I, I like that angle of the running backs involved in the passing game. Cause I do like Jair Alexander. I like his matchups. Uh, against the uh, Bucks receivers, who are obviously very strong, but I I think that and we were talking about it when we were breaking down the Packers, the the Packers secondary probably a little underrated, but I I do think there is some opportunity there for the backs to catch some balls out of the backfield. TJ, before we let you go, what uh what are we talking score wise here? Give us a prediction for Sunday for your Bucks Packers NFC Championship game. With the full understanding, gentlemen, that I work for the team and I'm on the radio <laughs> broadcast, yes. what am I supposed to come on the sports gambling podcast and pick Green Bay? Of course, I'm going to pick the Buccaneers <laughs> to win. I like this again as a high scoring game, something like 31 27, maybe, you know, maybe 30 24, something like that. Tampa Bay, kind of similar to how the New Orleans game was kind of playing out uh, last week. And you mentioned Fournette. Uh, as a pass catcher out of the backfield, that has been one of Brady's favorite targets at the end of the year here with, with uh, Ronald Jones hurt and uh, also on the COVID-19 list at the end of the regular season. So look for that to be a weapon. And by the way, we learned this from the NFL films, mic'd up stuff. I don't know that anybody else has ever called him this, but Tom Brady started calling him Lenny. He's yelling yeah. on the thing on the mic going Lenny. So now he is Lenny and his nickname now is playoff Lenny down here after the way that he won uh, in new Orleans, his hometown last week, he's playoff Lenny. So look out for playoff Lenny Lenny, (laughs) to make a big play or two in this game. I got Buccaneers in super bowl 55 in their own home stadium. Holy smokes. If that's the case, boys. Wow. That'll, that'll be awesome for you covering it right in your uh, backyard there. Well, appreciate you calling in TJ. Make sure you subscribe to the sports gambling podcast network feed. So you don't miss an episode of three dog Thursday or big fight weekend and uh, give TJ a follow on Twitter at buck sideline guy, TJ, a uh, best of luck with the bucks come Sunday. You cannot see me right now, but I am bowing to Sean Green and Ryan Kramer on the Sports Gambling Podcast. Let's do it with my Buccaneers winning a third straight road game and beating the top seeded Packers. Speaking of Eli and the Giants, Ryan Kramer, I'm playing your song as I leave. The last time the Packers were the home team in the NFC title game, Eli and the Giants beat them, winning a third straight road game. Let's repeat it. With Brady and the Bucks, boys. <laughs> All right, take it easy, TJ. Oh yeah, better than Vegas. That's right, giving out free video picks. Oof. Not only us, the whole SGPN crew. 
sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. Hit that link. Subscribe to our page. Page is popping off. What do we got going on here? We got some golf Amex Ooh. open picks, NBA picks from Ryan rich, fat baby McKee, Jesus UFC fight Island eight NBA picks. We even got some horse racing action. Kramer and I dropping some NFL so much going on. Got a full slate there. Got the Danta base giving his uh, college basketball picks so much happening over there. Better than Vegas, man. It's like YouTube, but for sports gambling, what you guys really care about, just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV sports gambling podcast.com slash B T V joining us on the line. The Don of bills, <laughs> mafia fantasy football expert over at sports gambling podcast.com. Adam Pelletier, Adam, never a doubt with that bills win against the Buffalo or sorry against the Baltimore Ravens, right? You were, you were never worried about that game. Were you? Nah, never worried at all. The <laughs> bills were just in control wire to wire the entire game. It was very clear what team was going to walk out of there with a victory. And Lamar Jackson seemed like he was going to have a last gasp effort driving. And then you start to hear the Celine Dion come in a little bit in the background <laughs> as he drops back in the pocket under pressure. Oh. And then he throws a duck and Taron Johnson goes 102. I don't care what the NFL scorers say. That was 102 yards that he was two yards deep in the end zone <laughs> when he picked that up playoff record interception return holder, Taron oh Johnson, taking God. it to the house. Yeah. To put the nail in the coffin. That was seriously a backbreaker. And Lamar Jackson for a, for a guy who was an elite athlete felt like he dogged a little bit on the uh, INT return. If I'm being honest, business decision, Sean. Well, no, 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 no. It wasn't a business decision. It was because he couldn't get around star cornerback Trey White. You love it <laughs> when did the have high some good paid cornerback is out there lead blocking for your rookie for your lowly drafted Nickelback, Taron Johnson. Many of y'all are going to know him from the meme as the guy missing the balls at the combine. That was Taron Johnson. <laughs> Hands weren't an issue on that. But Trey White leading the convoy out there to get him to the house. Well, you and, know? That, and that's kind of a great example of this Bills team in general. Like they, they, you know, you keep hitting on it. This team's different. This team's special. Snowball fights, dude. And, they're and having snowball fights. It really does. Like they seem like they're having fun. I mean, you know, they got Justin Tucker, the Bills mojo, forced him to miss a number of field goals. And yeah, maybe, Bill's mojo. You mean a 30 mile an hour crosswind <laughs> yeah, exactly. that also caused Tyler Bass to miss too. <laughs> then yes, that's Bill's mojo. <laughs> well, it just feels like they're getting the right breaks yeah. at the right yeah, time definitely. and everything it just feels like things are aligning for this bills team. And I, we've been talking it up. I know I keep reiterating the fact that this defense is different with Matt Milano. Saw a, I was hanging out in the Bills subreddit doing some research. Also came across a uh, a vintage photo of the Buffalo Jills from 1994 that I had to send Adam's uh, way. Yeah, shout yeah, out, yeah. out for the Jills. Shout out, out, yeah, R.I.P. the Buffalo Jills. But they had a great stat here, uh, you know, pointing out Matt Milano and what he does for the de- the defense. Buffalo's run defense goes from 28th to 9th with Milano on wow. the field, and Milano, of course, wasn't on the field the first time they nope. played the Chiefs and and Ceh. Had a huge game. They really did a good job of limiting Mahomes. You know, uh, Allen was dealing with a little bit of injury. The offense wasn't clicking, but they also had like defensive line issues. Like, yeah, th- th- there was a lot. If if someone is trying to, if someone that you have respect for, who you think is intelligent, is trying to reference the first game they played, yeah, it's just a bad example for so many reasons. I mean, especially if you're on the Bills' side, it, it just it's not going to be the same game. And and this this playoffs have been great so far for the team looking for revenge. Whether it's the Rams getting revenge against Seattle, the Bucks getting revenge against the Saints, it really feels like the team looking for that revenge from previous games has had the advantage. Another it's a metaphor, Sean. Twenty twenty one is getting revenge on twenty twenty. <laughs> I like where your head's at. Another thing that uh, you know we talked about in DFS, I even and I think Adam was even of the same mindset. He was kind of worried about Andrews uh, having a decent game, but they even did the bills did a good job uh, yeah. shutting down Andrews only four for 28 right now against the chiefs. 
What is what is making you nervous? Assuming Patrick Mahomes <laughs> plays, which it seems like he will, and obviously you're always a little scared about that guy. What particular angle, offensive, defense is really making you worried as a Bills fan? It starts and ends with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. I mean, it's just if he's playing, the game is just going to be different. On the on the plus side for the Bills, they only got to worry about the passing game. They don't got to worry about this run offense of the Chiefs this weekend. You know, no Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Daryl Williams isn't that great. And Le'Veon Bell looks absolutely washed up. Yeah. So <laughs> if Patrick Mahomes doesn't play, and the Chiefs are in an absolute world of hurt, and it's just going to be bad. And, you know, the entire, the entirety of upstate New York is just bracing themselves for the economic <laughs> recession that's going to hit the productivity if the Bills make the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> win, lose, or draw, if the Bills are in the Super Bowl, for about the month, for pretty much the month of February, upstate New York is just going to have no productivity. <laughs> well, it's going to be the two weeks leading up to it, just diets of chicken wings, <laughs> garbage plates, pizza logs, beef on wax, and blue light. And if we win, it's going to be the all time rager. And if we lose, it's going to be the all time depression. Yeah. But either one way, way or the other, if the Bills are in the Super Bowl, just wipe out any Bills fans in your life for the next four weeks. <laughs> Either way, a ton of Labatt is getting sold. So maybe it'll jumpstart the economy. All the wing sales, table sales, yeah, Labatt table blue. Sales. Like, they, you know, the Bills mafia needs supplies. They need, they need, uh, you know, they need munitions. So I, mm. I think maybe that would jumpstart the economy. Another nugget that really jumped out at me, I, I do think. You know, I I do think they're gonna have trouble with Stefan Diggs because everyone's had trouble trouble with Stefan Diggs. This is a great nugget. He's had 14 catches in the postseason. Every one of those catches has been for a first down or a touchdown. It's unbelievable. It, it it seems pretty simple, but when Josh drops back and he gets in trouble or it's a third down or a must, you know, just basically a must get situation, he looks to Diggs and Diggs is making him look amazing. And uh, you know, he's been huge in this Josh Allen transition. Yeah. Year. He just, he, I mean, we, we kind of broke it down before the season. It was one of the, the catch radius thing. Yes. The fact that he catches anything. So Josh Allen give, th takes those chances. And I think a lot of times it's just a product of, you can only cover for so long. Josh Allen it, can extend yeah. plays and digs and him are just on, you know, uh, like, like, uh, what do you he say? He's like a superhero or something like that. That they're, <laughs> they're just on the same superhero wavelength, and, and and it's you know sometimes it's just impossible to stop. We see it with Cream Bay and Devonte Adams. Sometimes you just can't cover a guy. Now, Adam, are you worried with no Zach Moss and they just have Singletary? It seemed like they kind of punted the run game there and and got a little one dimensional at time the offense, which had been carrying them previously. But again, it, what's cool about this Bills team or what would make you optimistic about them is they show you they can win in different ways. Are you worried about no Zach Moss and you know the idea of like, hey, we would have maybe pounded the rock a little bit more or would have had a nice running game to balance things? I mean, I think Dable had like 19 plays, <laughs> uh, 19 pass plays called in a row. Yeah. Are you worried about getting too one dimensional against the Chiefs? Not really, because this is a Chiefs team that gave up 346 passing yards to the Vegas Raiders. And let me tell you right now, Derek Carr can't hold a candle to Josh Allen, and none of those receivers can hold a candle to Stefan Diggs, John Brown, or Cole Beasley. And just remember the first game, the first game played in an absolute monsoon. It was a complete and total downpour. And right now, you know, there's a chance of rain in Kansas City, but all signs are that it's just going to be cold. It might be a little wet, but we're not going to have the downpour that we had in Buffalo early this season, which means we're just going to be looking at an absolute shootout. If Patrick Mahomes plays, this is going to be the shootout of all shootouts. Dare I say it may even finally break the old USFL record that Jim Kelly and Steve Young put up where they threw for like 1200 yards combined in a USFL game. It may be on that level where it's just like playground football. Josh is hitting digs. Mahomes is hitting Hill and Kelsey. And it's just points going up on the board. We might be looking at like a 50, 52 to 47 kind of game. Well, and, and, and that and was go ahead. Uh, and that was my lean too originally. But then uh, our buddy Moonoff, who over at sports gambling podcast.com does a good job on the ref reports and uh, kind of the leans. And Bill Vinovich is the ref for this game, mm. who is a noted under ref. <laughs> Five and ten against the over, average point total forty seven point eight. And in Bill Vinovich games, 
it's only gone over 54 points four times this season. So look out if, for the Bill Vinovich curse on if the under. Bill Vinovich takes this game to the under. <laughs> Bill Vinovich will quote retire at the end of this year. <laughs> this is the 640 primetime game. <laughs> True. Sunday night championship weekend. It's the last football we're going to see before the Super Bowl. It has the two rising stars in the NFL at the quarterback position. I like that. If Mahomes plays, which we all know he's going to, however concussed he is, he's playing this weekend because <laughs> apparently it was just a quote pinched nerve that <laughs> yeah. caused him to stagger off like that. It is the NFL is going to get Mahomes on the field. And if this game hits that hits, whatever the under ends up being bill Vinovich is getting fired because <laughs> the NFL doesn't want that. The NFL wants this to be a shootout. The NFL wants this to be almost like a basketball game in its score. And don't overlook the fact that Mahomes was clearly hot. Like part of the reason he got quote concussed or he pinched a nerve in his neck was because he was hobbled and he yeah. kind of went down funny. Yeah. And and, and, I and this Bill's pass rush has just been getting home well, every weekend. Jerry Hughes is taking it to another level. Uh, AJ Epinesa has really hit his stride. The rookie is really doing work in the pocket is just collapsing in every game. And the better Taron Johnson, Josh Norman, Levi Wallace and Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde and Trey white play on the back end means those linebackers are coming up, which means those Matt Milano blitzes and the Trey Edmonds blitzes are coming and they're going to get in the face of whoever's the quarterback. If it's Mahomes back there and he's still hobbled, he's going to be in a lot of trouble well, well, and Kansas city can do the same thing. Kansas city is going to be able to get after Josh Allen. But the difference is, is Josh Allen, has been one of the best quarterbacks under pressure this year. And he is just going to pick apart that suspect chief secondary. Well, and, and you nailed it. I think if Mahomes is where I was getting to is if Mahomes is hobbled and they get out, like he's going to have that much less mobility. That's going to maybe become a problem. Flip it around to your exact point. Kansas City, they get after him. That almost might be in the Bills' favor if Josh has one of those games where he's just doing it. And I, I really think that this game is going to come down to field goals versus touchdowns. This is an interesting nugget I plucked out, Sean. The red zone passing defense of the Chiefs, worst in the league. Buffalo mm. on offense, fifth. You flip it around. Buffalo, not as bad. They're an average red zone defense. 11th Kansas city's offense drops from an elite offense to 10th DVOA once they get inside the red zone. So the obvious key here is if Buffalo can close out drives with touchdowns, which it looks like they should be able to pretty efficiently and they can get a couple stops with Kansas city. They can put Kansas city into a tight spot because we all saw Patrick Mahomes got knocked out. No, Ryan, he and just he just pinched his nerve listen, and oxygen stopped going listen. to his brain. He he was fine. Understood. <laughs> and he had whiplash. Understood. <laughs> this is a guy whose foot's already fucked up. You yeah, toe he's injuries he's linger. Banged up. And now he's gonna be a little bit slower on those decisions. We've seen him look like an asshole before a little bit with those throws, those stupid fucking throws that only work because he's Patrick fucking Mahomes. <laughs> if he's a little off with those, this could go bad. And if I'm a Bills. I would imagine Bill's mafia is like man enough to not be crying about Mahomes needing like potentially definitely no, should we, miss the game. We they want to see him. Mahomes. Exactly. Yes. Bring on the ketchup man, okay? <laughs> we want Mahomes. We want to put the Chiefs in the ground and bury them and go to the Super Bowl just like we did 27 years ago. You know, interesting stat. Bill's Chiefs in the AFC champ AFC slash AFL championship game happens every 27 years, gents. It's cyclical. <laughs> and I'm pretty clocks. sure the bills are two and zero in those already. So we're going <laughs> for three right now. Well, yeah. but we want the best. We're going to beat the best. I don't care whether it's Brady or Rogers in the super bowl, but we're going to bury that sorry <laughs> ass NFL team, Love it. NFC team. And this is what's, this is how it's going down. A Love Adam, it. uh, Breaking news: Cole Beasley not listed on the injury report. Ooh. That got me stoked because he he gave me a goose egg last week. Don't two targets, zero catches. It looked like the knee was bothering him a little bit. How do you, you know? I'm a huge Cole fan. What are we What are we talking about this week? Am I putting him in DFS? What are we What are we doing with uh, Cole here? I think you're looking at the flex lineup for him. Um, you know, he's a nice flex play. Earlier this year, he was targeted seven times, four catches, and again, that was in the monsoon that took place on that in that primetime game. Um, 
and also factor in John Brown's back and healthy. The Bills have their top three receivers back and hopefully fully healthy for the first time basically all season. And that means Josh Allen is going to have his full complement of weapons for the first time this season. So everything we've seen this season has been without the top three receivers for the Bills. And Josh Allen has been scary good. He's got all three guys back now. Boy, if I'm the Chiefs, I'm sweating over there, just worried about everything. (laughs) Because additionally, the Bills are going to get Isaiah McKenzie on the field. And you know, Josh loves to go to him. You know, the Bills are just deep at receiver. They rival the Chiefs for receiver depth. And the Chiefs are going to have to do it without Sammy Watkins, who, again, I contend is the best actual receiver on the Chiefs roster. Tyreek Hill is a better offensive weapon. But if they need a big play, they need to win a route. They're going to go to Sammy Watkins like they did last year throughout the playoffs, and he's not going to be there for them. Watkins, you're right, is a great depth tool. I I think the other key, and we're bringing on the Chiefs guy later, I'd love to get his take on it, but Mitchell Schwartz, that right tackle, basically since he went out, they just stopped covering spreads and not getting these double digit numbers. And the offense obviously still good. I mean, they win a ton of games, but they, they don't quite get to that same elite level if they don't have that full eight, offensive line, eight straight wins, less than a touchdown. It is, it is weird to win eight in a row and not cover a spread. Kind of a weird mojo for this Chiefs team. Adam, walk us through game day. I know you just tweeted out a photo at Adam Pelletier on Twitter. You, we finally got you the championship belt. <laughs> Shout out to the good folks over at Party Belts. Now the Party Belts do have a nice little holster on the side for <laughs> beers. What walk us through any special routines? Uh, you, I assume you're going to be loading up on the bats, but what what do we got going come Sunday? Oh yeah, so we already started to plan it. We're gonna <laughs> probably get start getting together for the early game. Watch whatever that disaster is between the old farts happening over there in the <laughs> NFC. We're getting the old folks to bed early, you know, so that way they can get their early bird special. Gonna load up on some Labats, maybe some seltzers for later in the day if we get a little too far gone. Yeah, Labats. You know, has gonna seltzers load up now. the party belt. <laughs> gonna load up the party belt, just have it going all day. Get some wings, probably. Might get some pizza logs, another Buffalo specialty, and we're just gonna go to town. Got some friends down here from upstate New York. We're gonna all get together. I'm sure the stores are gonna be strapped for blue light again, <laughs> like they were last week. Had to go to two stores to get enough blue light to get us through the game last <laughs> week. And that was, you know, that was still, it was close, but we made it. Now, wait, that, some, that, guy, some guys going to his boss. We're moving a lot of the bats blue. You have any idea what's going on? Some grocery manager in Charlotte. Well, I don't understand this. What is a, I, I know what a garbage plate is. I've had those a couple yep. of times. Visit my buddy up in RAT. Uh, and oh. got got pretty hammered up there and ate some garbage plates. What um what is a pizza log? A pizza log what I is just like cheese and pepperoni inside of like almost a wonton, and you dip it in the marinara. Oh, it's delicious, boys. <laughs> let me tell you. All right, it does load sound up good. load up on the pizza logs, the wings. Obviously, you got to use blue cheese. No real Buffalo fan dips a wing into ranch. That oh, is sacrilege. Oh, oh, wow. oh my god. No, we throw. Someone asked for ranch. We're throwing them out of the party. They're not welcome there. <laughs> Throw them through a table. All right, Adam, before we let you go, give us a bills chiefs final score for the AFC conference championship game. Again, I think it's going to be a high scoring affair. I'm going to go bills, 48 chiefs, 42. Wow. Hell of Whoa. a game. 90 total points, <laughs> killing the over at 54. All right, Adam, appreciate you calling in. Make sure you follow Adam on Twitter at Adam Pelletier. Check out all his articles over at sports gambling podcast.com. Best of luck to you and the bills, Adam. All right. Thanks guys for having me circle the wagons. <laughs> Nobody does it like the bills. <laughs> oh yeah. Ace per head. Thinking about starting your own online sports book. Well, if you do, should head over to aceperhead.com. Use that link, aceperhead.com slash SGP. Sign up over there. Get up to six weeks of their amazing sports book software completely free. If you use our link, aceperhead.com slash SGP. They got it all mobile wagering, in game wagering. They set the lines, they grade the wagers, they do all the heavy lifting. Get you set up with your own online sports book website, aceperhead.com slash SG. P joining us on the line host of a sorry. We love football podcast and diehard chiefs fan, Danny Solomon, 
Danny, how does it feel being in another AFC championship game? It feels great, Sean. And you know, I was just, I wanted to just compliment you on your, on your ad read. You can really tell your love of gambling when you're reading those. <laughs> well, that's why people like advertising on the sports gaming podcast. You get a passionate read. You get, you get a guy who's trying to get people to start their own online, small business or uh you know, whatever. I'm, I'm a, I'm a man of the people and uh, I do, I, I have a huge passion. We used to uh, work together when I was a writer on ridiculousness. And I feel like I often sweated out a number of bets in our office uh, during work hours. Well, that's the best Absolutely. kind of betting <laughs> yeah, Day, exactly. daytime betting. Oh yeah. It was uh we had another guy who worked there who was uh, addicted to European soccer <laughs> and would just put his headphones <laughs> on and be like screaming when a Dutch team got a goal at like 1130 in the morning completely tune people out. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a fun place to work. All right. <laughs> but we're here to talk about the chiefs and really I, I got to start here. We have to talk about the, the progression of the Andy Reed COVID mask slash face cover. It's been a wild <laughs> ride in this 2020 season with Andy Reed. It started out. He made news with the, uh, the fogged up like plastic <laughs> welders yep, mask. That's how he yep. started slowly transitioned to other ones. Now he's got this. And I was trying to think about what it is. He has this odd shaped cloth, Kansas city chiefs mask. And I was thinking it's just something about it's odd and unsettling, it, it, maybe the, the shape of it. And it reminded me of in the movie, Deuce Bigelow, European gigolo, <laughs> the woman who has a nose penis, similar face covering. And that I can't help, but think Andy Reed has that going on. Whenever I see Andy Reed, what's going on with the face mask, Danny? He's, he's evolving into a final form. I think <laughs> he's, you know, he, he had, you're right. He had a face shield for most of the season. And then he gave it up for this thing. Very pillowy. He sticks the uh, the mic, the <laughs> mouthpiece, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> into it. It kind of seems like he might be sucking on it. But you know, he's 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 making all the right calls. I mean, the fourth and one with Henny, he knows what he's doing. I'm going to trust that this is how masks should be worn. Yes. I you know I keep I keep telling Sean it looks strangely sexual. Like it's the it's like <laughs> yeah, it's like the know. mask the gimp wears over his ball. Uh, well, yeah. well, I think Danny nailed it. Pillowy. Maybe it's a <laughs> maybe they they use satin. Whatever. It's it like is. when you see a girl at the beach, the the, the, the bikini bottom's too loose. It's yeah. like come on, tighten that up. Yeah, it it seems like he might have a problem with like lip tenderness or something. He's just trying to get it the fabric as far away, away from, from his, his mouth his, as possible. Uh, and, and we were. <laughs> We were all over that. I mean, we we uh, when he called that on fourth and one, that is a huge Andy Reid play, and I do think there is something about this Chiefs team. I I think that is scary. Um, if you're if you're the Bills or if you're betting against the Chiefs, is that the Chiefs are playing with house money, right? It felt like before they won the Super Bowl last year, they were a little bit tight. Then I think even just getting down to the Texans, twenty-four nothing in that first playoff game, they came all the way back, and then they were just like, "Hey, man, we're playing with house money. Doesn't matter. We're playing loose." They they roll through the rest of the playoffs, and even this season, like the regular season, they're winning games. They're not destroying teams. They're not covering spreads, but they're just they're playing with house money. And I I and I feel like previous years, maybe Andy Reid punts that ball away. But this year he's just like, fuck it. I gave the chiefs, you know, a super bowl. No, one's going to be breathing down my back. I like the idea of icing it here. D does it feel like he's playing a little fast and loose Andy Reed and the chiefs as a whole? I think again, it feels like a final form. He was always doing this a little bit. I mean, he was taking yeah. chances with even Alex Smith in the old days. He just, he's just proven right so much more now because the team is so good. And so he's just got all this confidence to keep doing it. And you're right. Like I know that winning that Super Bowl was a huge weight off everybody's shoulders on the team because it definitely was for me. Oh. And I felt like I was the more tight. I feel like I love the chiefs more than they even <laughs> might love themselves. And I just felt so tight assed all last year. I was such a piece of shit to be around watching the Titans game when we were down. Cause I was just like, we're never going to ever make it to the Super Bowl again. <laughs> Once we were there, it's, it was gravy to me. And everything since then it has been gravy. So of course I feel like the entire team feels the same way because they're actually out there feeling, you know, like the awesome players that they are. I'm sure they just feel like they can kick anybody's ass. Belief is powerful, Sean. Belief and and it's a crazy stat I heard them say on the game. 
61 games now straight where the Chiefs have had a lead at some point, which is an insane, insane streak to have. And and certainly they've done a great job in these, you know, even just dating back to last year, taking care of business in the playoffs. Obviously, the huge story is Mahomes. He was, we're taping this Wednesday evening. He was listed as a full participant in practice. Then they knocked him down to limited participant <laughs> in practice. Danny, I feel like maybe you're a little bit torn because you desperately want Patrick Mahomes to play, I'm sure, as a Chiefs fan, but you also like criticizing the NFL and their <laughs> loose stance on concussions. So are you how are you rationalizing <laughs> this ethically as a Chiefs fan? You love this too. You love you love just the putting liberals in their ethical quandaries, trying to be good people, trying to figure out yeah, how know. to solve problems instead of just saying fuck it. <laughs> so sorry about that. I mean, of course I want Patrick Mahomes to play. Sure. Of course, if the NFL is a giant conspiracy and this whole COVID thing is rigged and they don't even or the 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 concussion thing is rigged and the COVID thing for that matter it would benefit me if it was all rigged and Patrick Mahomes was going to play. But if he really has a concussion, we mm. did just win the super bowl. Chad Henney can go out there and lose a game and I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be a good person <laughs> that you were trying to make me think I'm not. Well, I, I here's the thing. Wow. I, I do think the uh, uh, Henny led chiefs team could be kind of frisky, especially if the line ends up shifting and they get, they're getting four, three and a half points. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to play. I mean, the we we just talked about it when we had the Bills guy on. It is kind of funny the way they kind of put out the medical report of like, oh, listen, he had a concussion, but it was just the pinched nerve where it cuts off your ends. oxygen and whiplash. But it's not like a real concussion. I mean, he got up and he was pretty wobbly. So we'll see. It looks like according, I think you tweeted out, Andy Reid said he passed all the deals <laughs> uh, post game. So again, unclear what the deals are as, as a coach or whatever. So, I mean, a, as a fan, I'd like to see him out there fan of the game, but um, it, it's going to be weird. Cause I think there's certainly the most likely situation is that he does play um, or that he, that, yeah, he does play, but that he's not quite a hundred percent. Now maybe lingering a little bit, the effects of the concussion has got to shake that off. But I think the toe could be an issue. What percentage of Patrick Mahomes would you want over a hundred percent healthy Chad Henney? Because Chad Henney in that offense with those weapons, I mean, you know, that interception he threw was horrible, but yeah. you give him a week uh, and Andy Reid's play calling. I don't know. I think there's a certain point of diminishing returns. We're starting a maybe 55% Mahomes or a 45. You're almost better off with Henny. What point would you have to get <laughs> in Mahomes health to consider being pro Henny there? I there's no percentage. They, I mean, <laughs> it, it Mahomes if he if you told me tonight he was he had the shit beat out of him by street punks. <laughs> I would still say just put him in there overhead. I I would rather watch that. And you've got to really You've got to take a full limb off Patrick Mahomes to turn him into Chad Henney. Yeah. <laughs> and well, it is funny imagining who hates Patrick Mahomes because I feel like, you know, maybe some Raiders fans, but for the most part, everyone loves Patrick Mahomes. Maybe it's like the big wigs at A1 Steak Sauce. They they heard about him putting ketchup <laughs> on everything, send some goons to rough him up. As a Chiefs fan, besides Mahomes' health, which is the big storyline, what are you worried about this Bills team? Because I do think this Bills team kind of like the chiefs last year, almost this team of destiny, a, a cursed franchise for many years, finally looking to get their monkey off the back, uh, off their back. It feels like they have a lot of similar uh, footprints that the chiefs had last year. Yeah. Well, they definitely have that power of belief. I'm sure that, I mean, the bills fans are have to be in hell right now because I know I was at this point <laughs> and you know, I think that they can, hang with us. Obviously their offense is just playing insane. Um, the, pr the thing I'm scared most of is Stefan Diggs. Yeah. I don't know. Ex I mean, I think our secondary is actually good. A lot of our defense is underrated, but I won't, I won't get too deep into it. It'll bore your fans, but we are, <laughs> the stats don't show it, but <laughs> Stefan Diggs is a problem for our secondary, I think. And you want to Ron Matthew, like you want him around the middle area, just doing whatever. And I think, you know, you can't afford to stick them on Stefan. So then I don't know what happens. I think they can probably score at will and hopefully we can, but I'm 70% Mahomes, I think is Josh Allen. 
Yeah, and and it's interesting. I mean, trying to figure out the the game plan for the Chiefs. I I think really you have to get pressure on Allen, but again, he's he's led the league in in dealing with pressure and still being able to uh, you know, complete the ball downfield and move the move the sticks and Stefan Diggs is having a career year. So it's interesting. I, I, how many teams are going to not be able to, to, to stop a one dimensional offense? Like at some point spat, I mean, we've seen spat, we've seen it before. Like this feels like a tailor made uh, opportunity for the chiefs defense to step up. Yeah. And, uh, and I do think the bills got a little cute when they threw like what 19 passes in a row and became one dimensional. I think the chiefs are well coached enough that if you do that offensively, the defense can adjust and you know the the Browns defense was it or the Browns offense decent and I think I think they had some moments there the Chiefs defense the Chiefs defense certainly not amazing but Patrick Mahomes and the offense can put them in very good spots there are you worried it sounds like no Sammy Watkins for me I, I know everyone's talking about the Mahomes injury that is huge but I, I keep coming back to Mitchell Schwartz it seems like once he went out that's when they stopped covering these big spreads. I mean, they last time they covered a game was November 1st, laying 20 against the Jets. They're still winning games, but Mitchell Schwartz did seem to be their key to to covering the spread and winning by a margin. Do you think he plays and ha- how do you think that impacts the game? He de- he's definitely not going to play. I think w- yeah. they're already they're like kind of whispery things from the from the KC beat writers about him maybe retiring because it's his back and that's like it's, you know, yeah. it can be death for these guys. We have Mike Remmers at right tackle. Who's actually not bad. I, he's not great, but he's pretty good. Another loss around that time was also Kalechi Semele, who was actually making things happen in the run game for the first time since we got Mahomes. Cause we've been pretty mediocre during the regular season with that. Um, but then he went down. So, you know, the offensive line is definitely the worst part uh, of the team. I think um, I just think that they just barely hold it together. And that's why Pat's getting a little more hurt than I'd like, but uh, you know, what's it going to, uh, they're, they're one dimensional in a way too. So I think that, yeah, no, you know, it's interesting. Problems, I think we both, can figure it out. Both of you guys, you know, coming into this game, I'd be shocked if either team had a huge game on the ground, especially with the weather conditions looking this, decent enough. This is like the kind of fight where you describe as uh, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but someone's getting knocked out. Yeah. Someone's getting knocked the fuck out. Well, and and I think I, I again I think uh, an advantage that the Chiefs can have if if they can somehow have Daryl Williams have a big game or Le'Veon Bell comes out of nowhere and and finally has a couple passes out of the backfield, I think that is maybe where they're susceptible, or at least you could you could see them uh, picking up some points uh, against this. That'd Bills. be a crazy zag if it came down to the team who ran the ball effectively. In no, this I, one. Mean, I mean it I, did in the first matchup, honestly. Yeah, 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 and and that was a that was a completely different game. Pouring down rain, the the Bills did a decent job handling Mahomes in the passing game, but Ceh had had the best game of his season. He's not going to be out there. You know, he we will. Are, I believe he will. Oh, you think? And he, Sammy actually, because they both practiced in a limited fashion, but. Clyde, they said last week could make it to the conference championship. So well, I believe this is this is breaking news because we just had the Bills guy on and he was telling us <laughs> that Clyde and Sammy Watkins aren't playing. So that is breaking news Uh-oh. here on Uh-oh. the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. If they're limited in practice, that's usually a pretty good sign. The playoffs, these guys, they shoot shoot themselves up with uh, you know, tremor all or whatever. Sean, and, please, and, you're and not play. a medical <laughs> professional. You can't talk about this stuff. Well, we always talk about Andy Reid, how he's so good against the spread uh and straight up after a bye. We both faded him last week, taking the Browns plus ten. Although so, I said I said Chiefs would win by seven, still got a bunch of shit from Chiefs fans. <laughs> you they should have covered the spread. You're lucky. It's just hilarious how far Chiefs fans have come that they're upset that they didn't cover the ten point spread in a divisional playoff game. But Andy Reid, two weeks after the bye, six and fourteen oh. against the spread. So, little, are you nervous about the two weeks after the bye angle, Danny? I guess he loses some of his power the further away he gets from the bye. <laughs> I he, I don't know what he does in a week that every other coach isn't doing, but it seems to like having that extra week seems to really do it for him. But you know, we went through the playoffs in the same fashion last year. And it just feels like if you're talking about one team getting knocked out, it just feels like, you know, we're the fighter with experience. I think we can do it under any circumstances. I don't know about covering the spread, 
that's that's your world. I couldn't. <laughs> I've I fucked up every DraftKings, every cent I've ever given to DraftKings. They've been able to take from me. So I don't know what I'm talking about with that. I feel like it's gonna be a very close game, but I do feel like we're gonna win it. Well, yeah, and the spread right now uh, over on WinBet is minus three for the Chiefs. It'll be interesting to see, like if if Mahomes is officially cleared, does it creep up to three and a half points? Uh, if he's if he's ruled out for some reason, which again, I, I'm. It sounds like he's gonna play. I think it would flip all the way to, you know, Buffalo favored by four points, probably maybe I, even four and a half. I do have to say, I feel like if this was the Patriots and Tom Brady had just been concussed, and there was like. The, the controversy would be massive. Yeah. The controversy would be fucking massive. Those fucking <laughs> cheaters, the Patriots they're, they're doing some, whatever. They're, they're, oh, the chiefs for the you most hear Belichick. He said he passed all the deals. <laughs> he doesn't know about the deals. He considers himself a doctor. He did. He, you know, I, I think uh, <laughs> you're right. I mean, certainly if this was the Patriots, uh, anything uh, that happens around them raises uh, a, a bunch of suspicion. <laughs> all right, Danny. Let's hit us with the thing you're most worried about when it comes to playing the Bills and the thing you're most confident about coming into this game uh coming Sunday. I think the thing I'm most worried about and no disrespect to the Bills but it's not really about the Bills. Our kicker is not playing yeah. very well. And that might come back to bite us in the ass. That's the one I really worry about with uh uh, the miss kick last week that kind of turned everything south for a little while. We were up nineteen three. Yeah, and then that, he missed a really important kick, and that, that, uh, it they just hit seemed that, like the they mojo that, was off. No, you're right. They hit. I feel like if they hit that field goal after that Baker int, there the you know it kind of yeah. swings the momentum of the game, and we don't even have that backdoor cover by the Browns. They're not really involved. That really seemed like when the game changed, especially when you talk about the spread. So. The kicking issues could be huge, especially in a three-point spread. What it, what makes you the most confident uh, as a Chiefs fan coming into Sunday? I just feel like Andy has been saving all of his best stuff for these situations. Now that he's had the whole season of being a champion, getting the monkey off his back, he's experimenting, he's trying things, and I know he did some shit in training camp that the writers still talk about that they got to see that's just going to blow people's mind. He always breaks it out around now. And I feel like that kind of stuff is decisive when the teams are, you know, I guess as close as the chiefs and the bills are. I like it. So it's, it's, it's confident, but not cocky, the uh, confident, not like cocky that. chiefs fan, probably the best a place to be. All right. Before we let you go, Danny, can you throw out a final score for the AFC championship game? I said it on my podcast. Uh, tune in. Sorry, we love football. Anyway, thirty to twenty-eight. It feels like a Ooh. weird game, a close game. Something odd happens, and uh, Bills fans go home really pissed off at us. <laughs> well, they will cover, so that's a good. That's yeah, that's a, positive. a Chiefs win <laughs> and not cover. All right, and uh, make sure you check out. Sorry, we love football. Uh, ever, available everywhere. Great podcasts are downloaded, and uh, check out Danny on Twitter as well. Danny, appreciate it, man. And uh, best of luck with your chiefs. Thanks guys. I'm glad we made it this far so we could talk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Happy Time for the lock dog tease. If you like betting locks, dogs and teases head to sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N win bet now active in Jersey and Colorado, Michigan coming soon. If you sign up with them, you get a $500 risk-free bet and a free t-shirt from us. Email that first bet slip in podcast at sports gambling podcast.com. And just, just to be clear, Tampa heading to green Bay laying three 51, the total Sean, we, I, we've not given out score predictions. No, we've been talking about score predictions all day. We've been asking other people for their score predictions. Yes. You know, I and again going back to the ref report as far as talking about the total, I am leaning over in the Green Bay uh Tampa Bay game because who is our our boy uh Cle Cle Blake Blakeman. He is a over ref if I've ever heard one. 12 Loves and 3 over. on the other over again. Shout out to Moonoff for uh <laughs> tracking these ref stats all season. Great. Been a valuable resource. I I mean, you got to take Green Bay here. The the revenge factor, the A Rod, the FU, the fact that Brady kind of already won his Super Bowl by getting to the championship here. And again, just watching that Green Bay team at home in Lambeau, 
it felt like no one's stopping them. I, I think they win. I think I think Brady makes it a game ish, but not not anything you have to sweat too hard. I'm saying Green Bay 35, Tampa Bay 27. Yeah, and to me, I we just watched them put up 32 points against a much better defense, I think. I know Tampa's playing well right now. But, but that Rams defense, even with the banged up Aaron Donald, that was a legit defense. They still put and lead, they left points on the board. And they still put lead in their paint chips up there in Wisconsin. <laughs> so Bruce Arians gotta be careful. Uh yeah, I mean, I, I I'm with you. I, I think something in the I, I was gonna go thirty eight to twenty eight. Okay. Um so really truly surprised. Uh, I, I know TJ kind of, he threw out a great point. The last time the Packers were hosting a conference championship game, what happened? Eli Manning and the New York giants came in to win their third straight road playoff game. doesn't matter. I think just Aaron Rodgers is another level right now. I, and I think, I really truly think people are remembering the bucks game last week against the saints and maybe forgetting what happened in the second half as the drew Brees's body, like just completely just started to disintegrate. He like, just kept throwing interceptions. He just and looked horrible. I don't think we're going to see that out of uh no at a green Bay. All right. Final predictions, Ryan's for the AFC conference championship, game. which by the way, Sean, three forty PM on the West coast, we will be live. Yes. We're going to be doing a gambling simulcast for the first half of Buffalo, Kansas city. And then we're also doing a Pre-game show on a locker room, uh, eleven thirty-five West Coast time on Sunday, and then a a live post-game show recap in the conference championship games. And again, download that locker room app so you can get uh, so you can call in. The link is over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com, and then betterviewlive.com or sgpwatchparty.com. Hit that link starting at around uh, yeah a couple like fifteen minutes before kickoff. Buffalo, Kansas City, hop in there, throw out some prop bets, and uh, be going live there. A gambling simulcast. Kansas City is laying three. Uh, that's where we're picking it at. So, so I was at two and a half earlier in the week. Yeah. Interesting, uh, especially if you like Kansas City. Can, uh, Fifty-four is the total in this one. A little higher. Uh, again, we listen to both sides. Obviously, uh, Adam came with the the fire and heat. <laughs> I do. I do feel a little the hot Buffalo. Wings. I do feel a little chalky. It, it does feel wrong that uh, Kansas city is, is kind of looking like they're going to be the less public side. And, uh, but I, but again, I, I think the one nugget I didn't get to throw out yet, the bills uh, since week nine, nine and one against the spread covering by a margin of 12.6 points. <laughs> yeah, period. It's, it's so crazy. Short, small sample size. We saw them not cover a couple of weeks ago. They just have been covering the spread, and I, I think the other big point to me is that th- there's just been no talk about Mahomes' foot. The yeah. reason he got concussed allegedly was because his foot was fucked up. He was limping. He wasn't getting the same mustard on his ball, and I think that I mean that has to matter. And I think what you would, if you were to ask most professional uh, betters, this is this is a three point game, maybe three and a half with a with a hundred percent healthy Chiefs team. They're not a hundred percent healthy team. No. So I think getting the Bills at three points feels feels great to me. Feels the fact that I can lay three with the Packers, who I thought I I legitimately. I was expecting a four and a half. Yeah, I, I told already, you I would have made it a six I and a half. It, I bet it at four because I thought it was going to go up. Six. I. I. I mean, it's a six and a half point game to me. Yeah. So coming back to the Kansas City Buffalo game, obviously, you know, Bills Mafia is in the, in the DNA of the sports gambling podcast. Sean, uh, mm. we're on we're on Bills Mafia taking the three points. Final score. You know, I. I saw something last week with that Bills team that again, people seem to be discarding what happened last week, but they played a defensive game against a really good defensive team. Yeah. And they came out on top. And like I told you earlier, I think this game comes down to the Bills scoring touchdowns in the red zone and the Kansas City Chiefs not scoring touchdowns. Final score 27 19. Buffalo wins 27, 19. All right. Kramer. Someone's going to get mad at me for having the chiefs not score 20 <laughs> points, right? That's, I mean, it, that's contrarian. Uh, certainly a hot take. Hot, 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 hot. I like the under, hot, in this hot, one, but I, I'm also, I'm also with you. I think 
you know, both both the Chiefs, uh, both Danny and Adam, both thought it was going to be higher scoring. I'm gonna say it's. I'm with you, leaning on the under. Again, we are not totals can I, players. Can I? But can I blow your mind? Sure. Right, weighted uh, defensive DVOA for the Bills, which obviously it, it it's pretty self-explanatory. Recency matters. <laughs> eighth, eighth in the league. This is not a team that is people people think about having a top ten defense. No, and and they're certainly playing like it. Again, I I cannot reiterate the Matt Milano angle. I think he it's huge. I say uh, Bills win 27-24. Kansas City misses a field goal late to tie the game. Bills storm the field and uh, get to their first Super Bowl in a long, long Ooh. time. Ooh I, I got to ride with the Bills. I picked them preseason. It would feel weird to get off the. Uh, the Buffalo bandwagon right now because I believe, yeah. and uh, no one circles the wagons uh, like the Buffalo Bills. Obviously, the Bills are our dog. Uh, well, I don't know, Kramer. Are you gonna make? <laughs> are you gonna make one of these two your lock? What are you picking for your lock? I, I mean, you have it teed up correctly. I think to me, the game locking up a Josh Allen led Bills team against Patrick Mahomes will just feel silly later. Locking up Green Bay in a situation yeah. where they're only laying 3. Yep. Uh we highlighted all the reasons why. It just feels like the number is off and 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 I get it Tampa's been good and and all the chowder heads are are pouring their money into the short-term sports investment markets betting <laughs> on Tom Brady because it's a baby fucking wheel man. Because Tommy just wins. But as we've pointed out, this is this is an entire team effort on the football field and a lot of dudes from Tampa are going to the cold. It's not just Tom Brady. And and the last thing I'll say, I I, I do believe that Aaron Rodgers it, this is a fuck you season that will culminate in him playing for a Super Bowl championship. Yeah, we're going to be doing a uh, a DFS picks podcast tomorrow and talking uh, McGregor fight with Jeff Fox of the MMA Gambling Ooh. Podcast. Big week. One of the more recent additions to the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. So I, I think it's tough not to lean in Aaron Rodgers going off there, but maybe the scoring conditions are a little bit better in Kansas City, Buffalo. A couple of interesting things to uh, think about before we get to that podcast. But again, uh, better view live first half of the bills chiefs game and pregame post game show your calls via the locker room app. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan. Uh, I mean, I think you parlay the Packers and the bills this weekend, Sean Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>